Hey Button Pushers, Nick here and today we are going to be taking a look at Furwind for the PS4. This was originally released back in October 2018 for the PC and is now available on PC, PS4, Switch and Xbox One. A copy of Furwind was sent over by the publisher for review purposes so thank you very much to them and the full written review is up on the website and the link for that is in the description below. Now you know how this works by now you hit the like button if you like this video and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future gaming videos. Now I'm an absolute sucker for a bit of nostalgia and when it comes to platforming it's just that much worse and being in a position where I have to critique these kind of games is interesting because I have a tendency to hold them to a very high standard because uh, after nearly three decades of life and gaming I know what I love with gaming and I feel like I've got a pretty good sense about what works and what doesn't work. Although I'm not vain enough to think that my opinion is golden so if you disagree let me know in the comments. Uh, with that in mind, let's get on with it. As a general rule, it's never a good thing when an ancient evil rises up from beyond the prison they've been trapped in for centuries. It tends to make them a tad vengeful. Well, this is the exact situation you're faced with in Furwind, as Dahun has been freed from his prison and is in the midst of poisoning the world with his evil. It's down to you as the titular Furwind to get new powers from the Ancients, which can be used to track down and face Dahun and his minions. Even if the ancients don't necessarily feel like being the most helpful deities in the world. Your mission of saving the world will take across three different chapters, uh, with each chapter containing four missions. There's multiple challenge levels on top of that, and some prisoners to rescue along the way, and a new power to earn. And of course, it's a platformer, so there's a boss fight. This means there's quite a lot to be done through the game and you've got a little bit of flexibility about how you do it. The levels themselves unlock in a particular order so you're kind of stuck in what order you do them but whenever you collect a certain amount of challenge scrolls that are hidden throughout the levels then you can unlock a new challenge level. Uh, these can be played at any time between the levels and in any order. Uh, the same applies to the prisoner rescue missions. As soon as they're unlocked you can jump into them whenever you please. Now the challenge levels and the prisoner rescues aren't just optional extras. To unlock the boss fight and finish off a specific chapter you need to get a certain number of each of them. Uh, you'll obviously need to clear out all the levels but you'll be told with a little list at the top of the screen how many challenge levels you need to clear and how many prisoner rescues you need to complete before you move on. Once you've filled all the criteria the boss fight will open up and the objective at the top of the screen changes so if you get everything you have the potential of unlocking something new. Across the multiple different chapters of Furwind there are different types of levels that you work your way through however this is one of the biggest weaknesses of the game because while in the first chapter it's pretty good because there's felt like there was some variety the following two chapters have exactly the same variety so it kind of ends up feeling like you're just playing a copy paste of the first chapter with a slightly altered color scheme and some different enemies which is a real shame. Of the different kinds of levels that you'll play through there are two levels that are set inside a kind of a ruin area. Uh, one area will be in complete darkness where you need to use firefly to prevent yourself being swallowed up by the darkness uh, one area will be set inside of a tower and one area will be a weird dreamscape type area where you're being chased relentlessly by a black cloud of hands where the game kind of takes a bit of a dark turn. The 
The general idea behind all of the main levels is pretty much the same. You need to gather up both halves of a guardian stone which will activate a portal that allows you to leave the area. Each half of the portal stone is being held by a guardian and these change depending on what type of level you're currently playing. In the ruin levels you will end up fighting a panther looking dude who has different attacks and can trigger traps to try and hurt you or there is just a giant wasp's nest where you need to destroy all the little pods while simultaneously fighting off the wasps that are relentlessly attacking you. In the darkness levels you will fight a guy on the back of a snail which is entertaining to say the least and the tower levels are a little bit different as you don't actually have to fight a guardian here. The uh, the Guardian Stone is kept locked behind a puzzle, so you'll just need to solve the coloured switch puzzle to get that one. It's not too taxing, you just need to worry about fireballs coming at you while you do it. The challenge and the prisoner levels play out differently from the main levels. Uh, for starters, they're a lot shorter and can be a hell of a lot tougher, uh, the challenge levels especially. For the prisoner rescue missions, you'll be put in an area full of enemies and you'll just need to kill them all, which is nice and straightforward. Uh, however, for the challenge levels, things are a little bit more complicated. There is a red barrier which blocks the exit to the levels, so you need to navigate the map and all of the various hazards and enemies that are thrown in it and find this red orb that's causing the barrier and that's also causing some of the darkness in the world as well so you break that barrier opens and you can make your escape sounds simple in principle but it it really 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 isn't at all as you play through the levels you will gather up gems which serve a few different purposes. Whenever you finish a level they are added to your overall pot which can then be used to buy upgrades in the shop. Uh, that means that when you finish a level and you start a new one you are starting with zero gems. Uh, while this might not sound like a bad thing it can be a pain to start with thanks to the resurrection totems. These act like checkpoints that save you progress from the moment they're activated but you have to pay for them and if you want to use the same one more than once you're gonna pay extra as an example there could be a totem near a guardian so you activate the totem save your progress fight the guardian and then want to save your progress again because otherwise if you die further in the level and don't find a different totem then you'll be right back where you left off before the fight in this situation you are going to be looking at paying pretty much double the gems you paid for the first time. Thankfully, if you do manage to find a new totem and you activate that one for the first time, it will update your progress and you won't have to pay a ridiculous fee for the pleasure. There's an undeniable cuteness and charm to the way that Furwind looks and there's a real nostalgic feel to the animation and the overall theme without it feeling tacky or awkward. I did think to myself at one point though that Furwind looks suspiciously like Tails and I just after I thought that I just wasn't able to unsee it which was kind of annoying. There's a decent mix of enemy types um, but I would have liked to see more in the variety of the level designs instead of just getting the feeling that I was just playing through the same general templates with a mildly different colour hue. You always run the risk with these kind of games that the inevitable chiptune soundtrack is going to end up grating on you. Uh, thankfully Furwind did manage to avoid that. It sat nicely in the background without ever becoming an annoyance and Honestly, that's probably the best case scenario. The overall speech of the game is generally handled by gibberish, which is, I mean, honestly adorable. But my only real peeve is that at the beginning of the game, there's a voiceover following along with a storybook. Um, the speech and the text don't match, which it's a real personal bugbear of mine. As Honestly, as I'm aware of how ridiculous that sounds, but it is. 
in classical platforming fashion, there is a real challenge to be had in Furwind, and at times it can be quite frustrating, but the good kind of frustrating, the kind where you're annoyed at yourself for making stupid mistakes. There's a good flow of learning the new skills, so you have a good chance to get used to one of them before learning another one, and I am always prepared for these kind of games to have certain levels that are a pain to get through. Normally in platformers it's an underwater level because underwater levels are genuinely the devil. However, Furwin doesn't have underwater levels. It has dark cave based levels. These are the underwater levels of Furwind, and they take the crown for being the most rage inducing things that the game has to offer. There is an undeniable charm to Furwind and there's a true platforming challenge to be found waiting within it, but there just isn't enough unique content to make it feel truly great. Uh, the first chapter is really good, but then the rest of the game just feels too samey and as a result it loses some of the charm and becomes a bit more of a slog, which is sad. I was really rooting for the little tails lookalike as well. I have gone with a rating of 5.5 .5 out of 10 for Furwind, which sits it between average and promising. Thank you very much for watching, hit the like button if you like the video, let me know in the comments if you disagreed with anything I've said, subscribe to the channel for more gaming videos, and until next time, hear the music!